One of the things that's unique about this place is the position on the hill. It has a unique vantage point of Wellington City with the harbour to the north and the Arongaronga Mountains to the south. The weather is constantly changing. The view is always different and the light quality in the studio is constantly changing as well. The studio is used as an artist studio for my husband Richard. It's also used as an architecture studio and we also have uh, family members and guests can come and stay. We designed and crafted this building from timber from my father's family farm in Whakatane in the North Island. The layout of the studio and the position on the site uh, was driven by our two prevailing winds, the northeast and, and the southerly, and also the sun path. The driving factors behind the form of the building is the wind pressures that we have in this location. Uh, having a, a steep pitch helps with those pressures. We used redwood cladding for the exterior of the building, grown in New Zealand and proved to be a very durable, sustainable material. We decided to stain it a dark colour, very, very dark brown, to minimise the visual impact of the building on the ridge line. Also having a very strong, simple gable form uh, kept the cost of the building down, but it also allowed us to have a variety of spaces. The studio is 36 square metres as a footprint and then there's a 9 square metre mezzanine. The orientation of the building maximises the solar gain in winter and we've used very high insulation to retain that heat in winter. Often on a nice sunny day in winter we don't need to use the fireplace to stay warm. We've also got the sliding doors meeting on the corner so that we can ventilate the space and protect ourselves from the prevailing winds. The living space is a very flexible space. It's been designed so we can move the furniture around. Uh, we have a, a couch which folds out to a bed so we can accommodate up to four guests in the studio. We have a centrally located fireplace. In a small space, you don't want to be tripping over a house, so we made sure that the tiles and the timber were flush. The kitchenette is designed as a multi-use space. There is a bench which is used as a desk when I use it as an architecture studio. The bench top itself was from a tree that had fallen down on my husband's parents' property. Above the, the desk is a, a long, low window which allows you to look out to the east to the Arongaronga Mountains. There's also a, a kitchen bench top where we have a sink and um, it's used as a, a kitchenette with a small fridge and a microwave. Lots of the other cupboards in the kitchen have been um, salvaged and reused from other pieces of furniture that we had and customised to fit into the space that was left over. We also have a window which allows light from the west to flow through the bathroom and into the kitchen. In the studio we've focused the storage around the kitchen area. There's also a string shelving which allows all those beautiful things that you want to be able to store but also see to be on display. We also designed the kitchen with the future in mind so that a, an oven or a, a laundry could be installed at a later date if you were to turn the studio into a permanent dwelling. The mezzanine space is a space for sleeping or reading, relaxing. We also have a screen up there for TV or movies. 
The mezzanine space you can access uh, from the main living space via a ladder and it is a full height gesture which goes the entire height of the studio and it is attached to the floor and also the roof beam. So you can go up the ladder and then step off at the appropriate height. For the windows we use double glazing and we also have an operable uh, roof window to encourage cross ventilation during the summer and also in the winter if the fire's on and the heat rises, uh, the roof window's a great way to ventilate the space. The bathroom in the studio is quite a small space so we wanted to enhance the feeling of space by using light by having a long slotted window that faces towards the southwest. Uh, we also used continuous floor finishes from the main living space through the bathroom. And into the shower, we've got the same finish, but we've turned it into a slatted floor to let the water drain through. We also positioned the toilet just tucked out of the way so you can't see it from the living area. In the evening, we have um, George Nelson pendant lights, which hang from the ridge line in the studio, and that allows the light to bounce around in all directions. We also have wall lighting in the kitchen and the bathroom and mezzanine areas, and they are salvaged retro lights. In a small space, it's really important to reduce clutter on the floor surface. All of the furniture in the studio is up on legs, so you get that feeling of continuity of space flowing under the pieces of furniture, and it also helps to bounce the light around the space. Another thing that's really important is pictures that have glass on them can act as, as mirrors to bounce light around the space and make the space feel a lot bigger. The deck has been designed as an extension of the living space. It extends two metres uh, to the north and the east of the living area and it's made from white ash. Studio 74 is a great example of using the space that we already have in our backyards. It can be a building that we use as a family now, but into the future it may be a multi-generational space where parents come and stay or even our children when they are ready to leave home. It's really important to use what we already have to reduce urban sprawl in our cities and to reduce the impact on our environment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Never Too Small channel by clicking on the logo and the notification bell to receive updates on our latest episode.